What's up guys? Deer Tour 2021 kicks off right now. We're bow hunting mule deer in the high country of Colorado. I've been waiting for this hunt for a long time. I cannot wait to chase my first velvet mule deer buck. So I actually drew this tag last year and I couldn't hunt it because I blew out my knee. I had to have surgery. It cut out my meniscus, stitched my MCL back together. And I actually lost pretty much all the muscle in my left leg. So there was complete atrophy. I've been working out like crazy, I've been training, and I've actually been using this hunt as motivation to get my knee healed up so I can do this hunt. It's not the ideal hunt to come back to uh, after a knee surgery. The whole hunt's gonna be above 12,000 feet, gonna be going up and down cliff edges across shale, you name it. Um, but like I said, I've been using this as motivation to get my knee healed and I am ready to get after it. So I scouted for this tag last summer when I drew the tag and then I got back scouting twice again this year. Uh, on the most recent scouting trip, I found a lot of good bucks, but no giants, really. Um, there is one big bachelor group with nine bucks, and two of them are shooters, and that's where I'm planning on starting. The one buck is a big, wide, deep-forked 4x4. Four four. He's an old buck with a great body, and he's, <laughs> he's been shot at at least twice by people I know, um, and he's lived to tell the tale. So that's definitely the target buck. The second buck is really unique. He's got a split right backside. So he is a 4x5. He's a really cool looking buck and I think he'd score pretty well. Um, I found a lot of other decent bucks along my scouting trips as well. It was a ton of fun just spending time behind glass up in the high country doing what I love to do. To tell you the truth, I'm just going to enjoy the heck out of this hunt. I'm more thankful than ever for my mobility and just to be here. Last week I was actually up in Alaska. I got a crazy concussion, cut my head open, and yeah, just glad to be here. So as we get into the video here, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click that like button, click subscribe, and enjoy the video. Let's get after it. All right, morning one. I just pulled up to the trailhead. Um, gonna hike in deep this morning. Should be cloudy all day, which is gonna mess with the thermals and the wind, but not the ideal weather conditions, but maybe at least try to put a stock on one of those two big bucks I found scouting, and we'll see how it goes. I've been glad for about an hour. Right there is where the video through the spotting scope is. Essentially what they did is they fed up the hill, across. At this point, we're about two hours from where I found them. And then right here where the blue lines are, they split. So three of the bucks go down to this set of trees. I thought they were gonna bed there, but they didn't. They actually ended up cutting across into this group of trees. The rest of the nine went across the hill this way and then cut down into the same group of trees. So at this point, I'm watching the two groups kind of converge in this little group of trees here. And with my spotting scope on 60 power from literally miles away, I'm peering in through these trees, looking as close as I possibly can to see where they're bedding. And when they lay down, I can actually see them lay down kind of through these trees because I have a bird's eye view. I dropped this pin exactly where they were, so I knew exactly how I had to make my stock. <sighs> all right, I was glancing I'm up there. I came all the way down, really steep. Good news is we have 
this storm rolling in, and so I'm gonna have a lot of wind to use to my advantage for the stock. I'm gonna drop my pack off here and take it. You'll be using the GoPro from here on out, so fingers crossed, here we go. Rap. Yes, yes. Rather than sit there and just wait, I hiked back the half mile to where I left the pack. I'm pretty sure he's down based on that blood trail. So I came back to grab the pack to pack meat and my hiking sticks come in real handy, especially with my bum knee. Right behind me are these pine trees. I planned to use those when I was glassing from right, remember, right there. I saw these pine trees in this little dip and I knew I could come up behind them and get within at least 60 yards. I drew, as I was stalking up, I drew a line on the base map and I knew from exactly where they were bedded to when I came out of those trees was 60 yards. So I dialed my pin, my top pin to 60. That way if they 
run off a couple of yards, right? I have a 70 and 80 yard pin. That's the nice thing about those three pin sliders. But anyways, came out of those trees, couldn't see them. So I knew here on this side, they were back. There's a little dip. And as I'm approaching this, I saw these pine trees and I said, oh good, more of a barrier. So I went from those pine trees to behind these pine trees. And then I came out and I look, and what I'm looking for right here, I was looking for a gap. And all I saw were antler tips right there through the gap. And it was my second in line buck. And I could have shot him, he was bedded. I had to neck shoot him so I actually wouldn't have shot, but then he snorted. I had time to range him. I knew that the bedded buck, which was my number two buck, was at 20 yards. And before I changed my pins, my top pin to 20, so it was 20, 30, 40 for my pins, because I knew it was gonna be tight if I got to here. The one I shot got up right behind him about 10 yards. I grunted, he stopped right in the shooting gap, quartering away, sent the perfect arrow whew, right behind the shoulder. And the rest, as they say, is history. This is exactly where he was standing when I shot. There's the first speck of blood, and then it gets real good. I mean, he just opens up there, and then again, he's just pumping, whoosh, going over the stick. Whoosh. Man. So, feeling confident. I was looking for my arrow over here. I could not find it to save my life. I was looking around for my arrow. I looked up down the hill. I saw a brown spot. Look at that right through the trees, baby. Show you what I'm shooting this year. Trophy taker, shuttle T-lock, 100 grain outsert, Easton FMJ, the micro diameter, the injections, four vein, bully right helical fletched. These things are wicked. There's the trees he's in. You gotta do the walk-up shot, baby. Oh my goodness. One that I was after, but I am not gonna complain. Look at that bad boy. Stud. Great deer. <laughs> Went in behind the opposite shoulder, came out the neck. Oh, well, bottom of the neck, more like chest cavity. So perfect quartering away. <laughs> Got him good. Look at that. Hell of a deer. Not the four by four I was trying to get, but it's one of the oldest bucks in the group. There was four gray deer in there that were all nice. And uh, I couldn't be happier, man. Velvet archery buck, first stock. Man, now I just gotta figure out how to get him out of here. <laughs> oh man, I have a long day ahead of me. Two days, really. Hey guys, just want to take a second and say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the uh, high country mule deer hunt. I'm actually heading back up into Colorado to hunt elk with the muzzle loader. Then I have two mule deer tags in Nebraska, a mule deer tag in South Dakota, and my whitetail tags in Wisconsin. So plenty of big game hunting uh, left in the year here. As always, click subscribe. That way you can follow along on the adventures. Click like, and thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed.